You want to hear a scary story? <laughs> of course you do, that's why you're here. So sit down and relax and listen to my tale. 200 years ago, in a forgotten village in the island country of Japan, a young woman named Taimatsu gave birth to a baby boy. But the midwives, they were scared of this child because the child, while healthy, was deformed in a way that they had never seen before. His head was covered in a skull-like feature. Its ribs exposed seemingly, its scapulas, its vertebrae exposed. The midwives wanted to snuff the baby out before Taimatsu could see, but Taimatsu, she, she demanded the child be given to her. Reluctantly, they gave the baby to her in the hopes that she would be repulsed. But she wasn't. No, she loved the child all the same. She named the child Ryokami, Japanese for wandering god. But there was another translation for that name. We'll get to that in a moment. The years passed by and the child grew up to be a young man. The villagers still feared him, but that was all right. Ryokami was actually quite well adjusted. The love of his mother was all he needed. And for a time, things were fine. Until his 18th birthday. Villagers found the child's body by the lake. Immediately they thought that the demon seed, Ryokami, had killed the child. In reality, he didn't. He was out fishing for his mother and himself. Taimatsu defended Ryokami, of course. But in the end, when Ryokami came home, he found his mother hanging by her neck. The villagers murdered her. And they were about to murder him. They all converged on Ryokami, stabbing him, slashing him with knives, pitchforks, anything they had. In the end, the boy died, and then he lived. Seething with rage, he immediately slaughtered the villagers. Men, women, and children, it didn't matter. He was raged, he was angry. He came to a conclusion that humanity was afflicted with the disease of hatred and that he was the only one who could euthanize humanity of that disease. And so he raised the village to the ground, made it a funeral pyre for his beloved mother. To this day, they say that Ryokami still lives 200 years. And they say that 
they say that he is plotting and planning and preparing for the day that humanity will finally be free, finally be euthanized of the disease of hatred. <laughs> That's what they say anyway. But the reality is much more subdued than you think. Okay, well, that was the thing. All joking aside, uh, that was my interpretation of Ryokami as he appears in my head. Uh, those of you who have auditioned for Ryokami, um, please take uh, what I've offered as a as a bit of a, as a bit of advice. Um, take it, make it your own, and I would love to hear uh, what you guys do with it. So yeah. Anyway, as it pertains to Ryokami, Ryokami uh, was created in 1997. I know that much because the inspiration for Ryokami came in the form of a professional wrestler by the name of Chris Canyon. And uh, this was when he had the gimmick of Mortis. And if you've seen pictures of Mortis, I'm gonna like throw up a picture of Mortis. Um, of Canyon as Mortis, I should say. Uh, so you can get a, good, get a good idea of the inspiration, basically. And um, if, if you see this picture of Mortis and you see Ryokami, yeah, there, there's definitely inspiration there. Um, Ryokami, basically, as, you know, Ryokami pretty much gave his origin right there. Um, he is basically, he's basically a serial killer. He is a mass murderer. He is very, he is the engine of violence, the anti-savior. He is very much, um, he was actually very much just like a very straightforward uh, villain, like a slasher. Uh, Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger, that sort of thing. Uh, in Trinity Concept continuity, he's basically like the archetype uh, for those types of types of villains, basically. Um, but that was him in the past. Uh, in the past, he and Jean d'Arc, they're mortal enemies, basically. Uh, they met in Japan. Uh, they clashed every so often. Um, in Trinity Concept continuity, continuity, Ryokami is Jack the Ripper. Uh, he was part of the Boxer Rebellion. Um, he fought, they fought in World War II. They fought uh, in the 1960s. They are very, they basically, long story short, uh, Ryokami is the Joker to Jean d'Arc's uh, Batman. Um, in Trinity Concept, uh, when we see him uh, in in the series, uh, he makes his reappearance in a sub story called Born Again, and I'll post a link of it down below. Uh, basically, Ryokami has become more of an anti-villain. Um, he is the kingpin of the Downware. The Downware being this. The Downware is this. Um, is the underbelly of the way station. It's like a dystopian, cyberpunk uh, type of reality, t type of uh, district, I should say. Um, take a look at games like uh, Cyberpunk 2077, uh, Observer, um, Deus Ex, and or or better yet, uh, look at the movie. Like look at movies like uh, Blade Runner, Upgrade. Uh, those are perfect examples of what to expect when it comes to the downwear. Um, but Ryokami himself, he is now kingpin of the downwear, and he has become an anti-villain. 
because it was you you read the um, you, you read the sub story but long story short uh, he was in hell for a while he was actually uh, defeated utterly and sent to hell the seventh the seventh circle of hell violence um, and he was drowning in the boiling river of blood this Felegathon and it was around this time that he had the had an epiphany that he realized that he was being too indiscriminate when it comes to euthanizing humanity of the disease of hatred so he was uh, he was rescued from hell by Gabriel and Gabriel gave him a chance at redemption basically he made him king he helped him he brought him to the downware and from there Ryokami uh, usurped uh, command of the kingpin basically and his new goal basically is to keep crime as sequestered as best as he can in the downware so that the other districts of midpoint new iroquois and halopolis are um are safe from crime not entirely safe of course i mean real comedy is not perfect but basically he is scaring uh, the criminals in the down where to the point where if, if they screw up, Ryokami is going to kill them, basically. And Ryokami is imaginative, imaginatively psychopathic. Um, the th I mean, like, he, he is very much, he's, he's, he, he's a psychopath. He is very, he's, I mean, take a look. I mean, you look at like a lot of the um, a lot of the kills that Jason and Michael Myers have done, and then and then have Rio Kami have someone like Rio Kami basically just like turn it up to eleven. You and this, he is very much a very violent individual, but he's using that violence to actually protect the other districts. So like I said, he's become an anti-villain. However, Jean d'Arc is not convinced. Jean d'Arc does not like Ryokami at all. Um, and this is kind of, this is kind of like um, a, a bit of a hypocrisy when it comes to Jean, because Jean d'Arc is the aspect of hope. And Gabriel gave Ryokami hope that he could re be redeemed and use his uh, violent tendencies for good. Jean, Jean doesn't believe it. I mean, Jean, Jean is very much, Jean and Ryokami's past is way too strong. It's way too, it's way too violent. And Jean, it's gonna take a while for Jean to actually warm up to the idea that Ryokami is actually sort of one of the good guys now. So it's gonna, that's gonna be an aspect to the story that I would definitely will be um, exploring fairly soon. So look forward to that. Um, so that's pretty much about it. Uh, that's about it for Rio Kami. Uh, the origin story, you, you, you've heard his voice through my voice. Um, you know a little bit about Ryokami. It's, like, it's not much. It's not much. Ryokami is going to have a lot more fleshing out very soon in the story, I think. And that, that being said, um, with that being said, uh, here comes the tagline. Thank you for letting this old man ramble, and, I will, and you will hear from me in the next video. Take care now. Bye-bye then.